everyone, welcome to another video. I decided just to switch on the camera and start filming because otherwise, yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> a video will be made. So first of all, I wanted to say that I'm adding a few fun items to my shop. Uh, it's not yet the stamps, don't worry, I will be you know you will be the first ones to know when the stamps are restocked but there is some progress there and yeah i'm just I, i'm trying a new manufacturer and so i have to test the stamps before i offer them to you and um yeah so i've just had some delays unexpected delays and yeah, I I think I will be switching manufacturers because the other company I was dealing with just, I don't know, things seem to be moving at glacier pace and that's not going to work for me. So anyway, uh, but I am adding a few things. I am adding, for example, this pencil case, which I love. I've had this for, I think, over a year now and I really, really enjoy it. And it's not so easy to find, I've seen. I mean, feel free to look anywhere you prefer to shop, but I am going to offer a few of my favorite colors in my shop. And there's a polka dot one. I think I might just have to order a couple more to have because I love these so much and they're so convenient. Uh, and they hold a lot. And yeah, it's very easy to use which I don't think is the case with not all pencil cases were created equal. Uh, I just find like the opening here and this little flap here that it, it's just, it works for me and great for travel. So there's a polka dot one, like a white with black polka dots, super cute. And there's also a corduroy, like a few options in corduroy, including one beautiful kind of lilac-y um, violet color, which I think I will also order for myself so uh, to have so you can check these in the shop and also some really fun bags that I haven't been able to use because my daughters just confiscated them as soon as they uh, arrived <laughs> so uh, yeah but there's a separate video for that so today I just want to talk and play a bit with watercolors and kind of talk about choosing a limited color palette. And I need a brush. Let me grab one. I'm going to use this brush, which I haven't used in a while. This is, I love it, because it's not so easy to find <laughs> a quill travel brush. This is it. This is called Leonard 76. RO I want to say and seems like it's called size one and yeah I think I got this at a German shop if I can find this for you I will uh, battery I will look I will link it below so I want to create kind of a, a color story for painting Greece or like inspired by the Greek islands and of course there are hundreds of islands in Greece, but the ones that I visited in my last vacation were Mykonos and Paros, and they both have that uh, whitewashed, you know, mostly blue accents uh, kind of look to them. So that's what I want to do. And I'm going to show you how, like one way of coming up with such uh, like a limited color scheme and the first color I'm going to start with is kind of my star color and in this case I want to use lavender because it's just it's this beautiful beautiful shade of blue lavender is mostly formulated by using uh, French like ultramarine blue the pigment that they make for ultramarine 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 blue from <laughs> and white so it has a little bit of opacity to it it really depends on kind of what you're looking for the um, from my experience actually the Daniel Smith one is more transparent which I do kind of like because I tend to have like a heavy hand and 
I, you know, I prefer to have like with some colors that are not like super, super opaque. Uh, but every brand that I've tried, lavender, Rembrandt has it, Van Gogh. If you're on a budget and you're in Europe, look for Van Gogh. They have a ridiculously affordable uh, range, including a beautiful lavender. Um, Rembrandt has also Shinhan, Holbein, uh, they all have lavender. So this is kind of my star color because those are like my blue accents uh, of the buildings in the islands. You can also use them for sky, even though I think the sky is a little bit more turquoise. But if you've been here, you also know that I'm not about painting anything realistic. And, you know, if you want to have yellow skies, go for it. So from my star color, what I'm thinking is I need the complementary color. And that would be the color opposite it on the color wheel. Now, I don't exactly have lavender on the color wheel, but I would say it's close to blue-violet. And opposite it, we have uh, gelb orange. This is in German, uh, like a orange yellow opposite this. So I can try and see from my palette if I have something that neutralizes. Complementary colors will neutralize each other. And you know, let's do it like this. So I can look what I have in my palette. This is kind of a limited color palette and I think that's also something that, you know, is worth mentioning because especially when you travel, you don't carry all of your colors with you. And I'm gonna try and work with what I have here and see what I can come up with. So, and what I'm also interested are the mixes. I'm not just interested in if they completely neutralize each other. I also wanna see what happens um, when I mix them. So I'm going to mix here a little puddle of lavender, kind of spread it around. And I think from the colors that I have here, what is closest to the orange yellow is probably the nickel azo. Yeah, maybe the, let's try the Naples yellow and see what happens. So on its own, it's just Naples yellow. And then when I mix a little bit of lavender into it, it turns into actually a really attractive kind of, you be the judge. It's kind of a greenish, like a minty, pastel-y green. Both of these colors have white in them. So I expect the mixes to be kind of on the pastel side. Then we have even a more greenish color. And what we want, if they absolutely neutralize each other, we should get a color that is neutral. <laughs> but something that is just like so neutral that you can't tell which colors made it. So this is here, I think it's as good as we're gonna get. And I would say this is a pretty neutral color. So what could be tricky in this particular combo is that it's very light because both of these colors are light and they don't have um, a dark value to them. So another option that might be worth exploring just for the fun of it is the other yellow that is not too orangey, which is nickel azo yellow. And let's see what happens when I start gradually adding lavender. I get this actually very attractive kind of a green gold gold green green gold color when i add more it becomes more bluer more muted and 
actually interesting to see what we're going to get. Because when you don't have colors that are opposite each other, you usually get something that still has, you can say, this is like a very, very muted green. And I think this is what we're going to get in this case. So there's not enough pink or red here to completely neutralize it. So what I can do is try again with a more orangey yellow. So that would be a yellow that has more red in it. Um, I have two options. I think I will go with this one. And we'll see what happens. So I'm doing all my experiments here. Yeah, that that might be the one. You see this color? This is really gray. Look at that. Look at that color. This is very, very neutral. When I'm looking at this, I can't see lavender and Naples yellow red. I just see gray. So I think this is actually... Now, again, there's no right or wrong choice here. Um, complementary colors kind of make the other color pop. But um, this is a personal choice <laughs> type of thing. And I... Actually, I find this also very appealing. This is not really doing it for me. It's a bit too bright on the yellow side. Um, these together are interesting. So I kind of have a dilemma between the two. I like the idea of Naples yellow. So I think I will actually, even though I showed you that the Naples yellow reddish is more complementary, so it's, it really is opposite the color wheel from lavender, and we see how beautifully they neutralize each other. Um, I think I'm going to go with Naples Yellow. Another th principle I use when I'm swatching colors is color craving, which is a term I learned from Flora Bauli. I hope I pronounced her name correctly. She mostly does, she works with acrylic, but... Um, yeah, she uses that term and I really like it. So here I'm going to see <laughs> how I feel about each of these two colors that I'm debating <laughs> if I should use them, how I feel about them next to lavender. And it's a tough choice. And there's also the gray. I think I'm liking the Naples yellow, so I'm going to use that here. So we have two colors that we chose already, and now I want to bring something with um, a dark value. Because one of the things I find that make a painting work is contrast having light values and dark values. And these two colors are, I mean, the yellow is very, very light. And the lavender is, you know, kind of used heavily. It's kind of a medium value, I would say. So I need something dark. And in my palette, I have probably like these three are my dark options. I also have ultramarine blue, which can get quite deep and dark, but I prefer to use these. So I'm not gonna think too much about it. I'm going to let my color cravings decide and just do here some swatches and see what I like. The lavender is my star color. It doesn't mean that it will be used the most, you know, real estate, that it will take up the most real estate on my painting. I might just have pops of it 
to like the these domes that they have on churches and buildings in Greece and then use the other colors for most of like the rest of the painting but I still want to see what I like next to each other and so I'm just swatching all of my dark colors right on my sketch. I'm not too attached to the sketch. It was just something that I made very, very fast. Still debating. Uh, something else I want to use, I like in my palettes is a pop, a pop of color. Something just like bright and fun and happy because that's what I like. <laughs> I like fun, happy <laughs> colors. And that's gonna probably have to be pink or maybe violet. But again, I want to see which ones I like the most with all my other colors. So I'm going to just put here little swatches. And if you're kind of following the same guidelines, sort of, that I'm using, you can do the same thing and see what's speaking to you. And I already feel like it's going to be, <laughs> I know, shocking, bright yellow, uh, bright rose, right? Shocking. Yeah, I think I like it the most. And I also know that I like how it plays with Naples yellow. So let's just do a fun little swatching here. Just for funsies. Bright Rose is very transparent and vibrant and Naples Yellow adds opacity to it. So all of the shades in the middle are kind of pastel -y. and I really like that. Okay, I think that's a good representation and I like that a lot. So, Bright Rose, you made it. Now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, still want more pop. And what I'm considering are my pop colors <laughs> that I like to add are cobalt teal, olive green, sometimes all of them. might do ultramarine blue and this also could be in a different medium so for example if I want to add ultramarine so as I was saying I might decide that I want to add ultramarine blue but add it with a different medium like an oil pastel so I just want to see how the colors work together and then more bright colors I would consider including would be something like quinacridone gold or nickel azo yellow. So those are kind of my pop colors and just to mess it around a bit you can spray some water maybe let the green the quinacridone gold I have is from Core. So I know it's going to take over everything and I'm kind of enjoying, <laughs> I want to see that. Okay, so let's take a look. And I also have this color that I added to my palette, Amazonite Genuine, which I haven't been really communicating with. I don't know, haven't been able to use it. Oh, I forgot, Cobalt Violet my precious. So that's another 
pop color. And another forgotten one, ultramarine rose. So here we are, and this already makes me happy. And I'm looking at it and I'm trying to see what I like, what is speaking to me and what is not. So I really love these. I'm very happy with these choices. And I think I want to include this. Let's do that. I feel like it has some really interesting warmth to it that can kind of if I use it very, like very, very watery, I think it would be a fun color for, you know, some shadows in the white structures. The teal and the green really bring joy and happiness. <laughs> kind of want them all. Okay, so at this part, I just got into the groove of painting <laughs> and that's why I'm narrating this. Uh, I really enjoyed making this sketch and I definitely want to just explore this theme and just the idea of using these you know like mixes of two colors or stripes of bright watercolors or whatever using that actually in my art because honestly that makes me really really happy and <laughs> my goal is to have a creative process that is super enjoyable from start to finish and also make art that I really love and makes me happy. Now, I've made a lot of progress in both those areas. I think a lot of it has to do with kind of letting go of a lot of kind of noise or it's not even noise. It's just, you know, when you're starting out or when you're in your first years of developing as an artist, you listen to other people and I mean, it's kind of, you have to, right? Because other people have the knowledge, the experience and all those things. But there's also a lot that you have to figure out for yourself. So it's always kind of a combination. But I think one of the most fundamental things you can do for yourself to be happy with what you make is to understand that everyone has a different process and a different voice and even if some of the artists you most admire and enjoy learning from even if they swear by something it doesn't mean it's going to work for you and I don't know that took me a long time because I always kind of you know listen to <laughs> experts and just people who have more experience than me but there's something different I guess when it comes to art uh, if you want to have kind of an authentic voice and yeah so I'm just like have been trying to let go of everything and kind of do my own thing and paint you know flowers the way I want to paint flowers and paint abstracts the way I want to and paint scenery the way I want to and many times it doesn't really follow any other technique or process that I've seen other people do so it's just kind of you know how do you say like feeling your way in the dark or something it feels like that sometimes and sometimes I feel like I, I, I wish someone could guide me. I wish I could go and learn from someone who does exactly what I want to do and kind of show me the way and, you know, just make things easier. <laughs> but <laughs> and it's it's true for some things because a lot of techniques and a lot of things that other people do will help you kind of, you know, push forward your own progress 
but you don't have to like do everything on your own but at some point I just I find it kind of I don't know almost lonely to just be with myself and trying to figure everything out I you know I, I just wish I could take a course or something that would be just you know just for me <laughs> maybe I need to do like a mentorship you know with someone but I don't even know I mean I have a lot of artists that I really admire and their art really speaks to me and I would love like to hang a piece of their artwork on my wall but uh, it's not necessarily what I want to do I mean I want to do my thing so I don't know I just yeah I guess part of this is feeling stuck part of it is just you know, kind of pushing through these, what seems to be like dead ends. But um, yeah, I, I just, I try to see which parts make me happy and what I respond to on the paper, like what is happening in the painting. I'm very much an intuitive painter. I don't like to plan things. I like to, you know, put paint on paper or something or sketch or like doodle or whatever and kind of see what happens and what the painting needs. Uh, that's sometimes a really confusing <laughs> expression that you hear uh, intuitive painters say like, you know, see what the paint, like what the uh, artwork needs or what the painting needs. But it's exactly that. And many times, you know, I get it wrong. I overdo it or... Um, I don't do <laughs> what the painting needs. I do something. <laughs> Sometimes I don't give it time because I'm impatient and uh, I hardly ever go back to pieces that I started. So again, for some people, they might feel really comfortable working on one piece of artwork or several pieces of artwork um, in the duration of weeks or even months. Uh, for me, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of wish I could paint with watercolors on canvas. And don't talk to me about watercolor mediums because I don't like them. I don't like how they look. I don't like applying them. Uh, I just wish I could paint with watercolors on kind of raw canvas. But maybe I should just try working with some fluid acrylics and kind of get over myself. Because it's just, I, I find it's like hard. It's hard to paint bigger and intuitively with watercolor. Once you start layering things, the some of the layers underneath start moving around. You have to like stretch paper. It's a whole thing. So I don't know. I don't know where I'm going, but I will let you know. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed just playing in my sketchbook with colors and textures. And I hope this was helpful to you, uh, trying to kind of figure out how to come up with your own color story. Uh, what I most, what I hope the most, can I say that, <laughs> is that you free your mind and you know just realize that you can do whatever you want and you know you don't have to use certain colors because someone says that's the color you should use for sky I love my peachy pink skies and I think I may do that again so yeah uh, that's it Thanks for watching this somewhat long video. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me and you feel inspired to paint in your sketchbook. And I'll see you soon in another video. Take care. Bye-bye.